Come on, Plato. One more rep. <laughs> Socrates was a crazy person. He described a voice in his head called the demon or the daemon. And you know what he did with this voice? He listened to it. It wasn't like a scary voice like, oh, kill, kill your family, Socrates. It was more of like a guide. Whenever he was going to do something stupid, it would say, hey, man, um, don't do that. He thought it was a divine voice, which I don't know, maybe it was. It doesn't matter though, because he listened to it, and now he is regarded as one of the best philosophers to have ever lived. I have the same voice in my head, but it's telling me to make a YouTube channel, and to stop shirking my responsibilities, and to nail rats to the wall of my room. Socrates and Plato were content creators from Athens a few thousand years ago, which is a little Greek city, country, thing. Thinian life was based around fostering physical strength, beauty, and big brains. If you didn't have anything to do, you would go to the palestra and you'd rub yourselves down with oil and wrestle in the sand naked. Or you could join the cross-country team and run around outside naked and throw heavy objects around. Or if you were a lady, you just waited for your husband to get home. Or you were a slave. There were three B's in Athens. Bodies, brains and boys it was it was really bad there were these like debutantes that would hang around the events and they'd wait for little boys to get like ripe and then they'd court them they they traded them like nfts man that's so bad this is horrible now, they were not exactly moral people and they had content creators but there were no computers so they all had to just go to the agora and these guys called the philosophs would present their video essays but the comment section was right there so they would be screaming at each other if they disagreed and then they would get into fights and and they were all naked and socrates was the best he was that cynical guy he didn't like society he didn't like anybody no that's not true he probably actually really loved everyone in athens and just wanted them to be better than they were so he came up with a lot of ideas to help them. But this time he didn't listen to his smart demon voice in his head and he didn't write any of it down. He didn't post anything to YouTube. But his pupil and lifting buddy, Plato, he had foresight. He carried a gym diary. And here it is, he gave it to me. For only being able to write down stuff between sets, he got a lot of complicated ideas in there, like the forms and the soul, but I'm only gonna get into the easily digestible stuff so that you'll watch this and then you'll feel smart and then you'll wanna subscribe. This involves Socrates just incessantly asking follow-up questions to people's claims so that they could actually back it up and get to the core of what they say. And they would be able to do that, or they would just give up because they weren't really saying anything in the first place. What are you doing? Um, legs? Squats? Why? I just want to get in shape. Do you think there exists a perfect squat somewhere? I, I don't know. Yours is not perfect at all! I'm sorry! What am I supposed to gawk at if you're not doing it right? I remember this from high school English class, but it sucked because no one wanted to talk and, I mean, no one actually read the books we were talking about. And the only question being posed was by the teacher when she would go, Why? Why aren't you all talking? This isn't gonna work if no one talks! He used his brain to tear a wormhole in philosophy itself. So much so that people hated him and wanted him dead because he was simply pointing out things within them that they didn't want to acknowledge. I'm not sure if he did, but Plato literally flexed on people. There are now two categories of philosophy. One is the pre-Socratics before Socrates, and one is after Socrates. No, Pythagoras, I'm not listening to you, or your triangle cult, or your mathematical rationalizations for using creatine. It's cheating! This one follows the Socratic method of constantly questioning things, but this time you're constantly questioning yourself and your whole perception of reality. Everyone in the world is in a cave, and most people are on the bottom watching a shadow puppet show on the wall. The people in the higher level of the cave are creating the puppet show using light from a fire, and they're tricking everyone, but they're also tricking themselves, as there's an outside world with real sunlight and truth. What are some caves? The values of the country you live in? Cave. You think the earth is round? Cave. Oh, the NFL's not rigged? Cave. You enjoy a work of media without having to look too deep into it? Cave. And Plato says if you emerge from your personal cave, you can prance around in the grass and the flowers, under the sun full of truth and delight, naked. I love this idea, but it also makes me laugh because most people first hear about it on a YouTube video like this, or a better one, or as a freshman in college when they take their first philosophy class to fulfill the general education requirements. They'll sit down in the classroom and the professor will be like, wow. It's a beautiful day, let's go outside. And then he'll give the first lecture out in the commons of the university, like the Greeks of old. And after he reads the syllabus, he'll go over two or three famous philosophical thought experiments, and he always includes Plato's cave. 
And then, people like me will leave the class as if they've actually left the real Plato's cave, and they'll dramatically explain the concept to any poor soul that they happen to corner in a conversation. They'll be like, have you heard of Plato's cave? Have you seen Blade Runner? And there's always gonna be that entitled lady who reads a vaguely empowering quote on some Instagram account, and then feels like Buddha in her yoga class, but afterwards she's still gonna get down on all fours and throw a conniption fit because Starbucks got her order wrong. Or you can be a vengeful social justice warrior who gets all their info from TikTok. Or you can just watch nighttime news and be a racist or something, I don't know. You like e-girls! It's a cave! An illusion! Yeah, so- And it's more than likely that you're one of these people. And even if you do have a groundbreaking epiphany, all you've done is stepped out of one layer of the cave and into another. You can follow the light of truth, but you can never grasp it and fully integrate it into yourself. If you did, you'd be like, I don't know, God. And that's not you. You can barely put down your phone, or clean your dishes, or do your homework. Anyone who tells you they have all the answers is lying to you, or they're lying to themselves. Don't listen to anyone. This includes me. Don't, don't listen to me. Who? <laughs> ha! Ogre, oh, geez, what, Socrates? Why are you trying to lead people out of a cave when you yourself are trapped inside of it? Can you just shut up and grab a pickaxe? It's a magic ring that turns you invisible and untraceable so that you can get away with whatever you want. The story goes that a regular guy put it on and then he killed the king and married the queen and, you know, he was evil. One ring to squat them all, one ring to find them, one ring to bench them all, and in planet fitness bind them. Plato argues that most people wouldn't be able to resist it. He believed the only thing stopping people from doing questionable things was their reputation. I don't know, if I had invisible invisibility powers, I'd go into Target and... and... Take some Pokemon cards. Remove any possibility for someone to be punished, and their true nature will emerge. But it's just a thought experiment, it's a story. A magical ring like this doesn't exist, right? Well, it's not an object. The ring is opportunity itself. If you feel like you can get away with something, you will most likely do it. You give someone access to an anonymous thing like the internet and they'll sit behind their screens and spew hate and bully people. Like you wouldn't do that in person. You wouldn't give a deranged video essay to someone's face. But if you also give someone a swole body overnight without them having to work for it, or a high paying job, or a position of power anywhere, they'll probably turn into a creep. It's no wonder that any institution with power, like schools, the government, or churches, have scandals like this because people have power and they think they can get away with it. And guess what? That's everyone. You and me. Yay! The whole world is bad. How's that for a double-edged sword, liberals and conservatives? You both can't hate me for saying this because then you would agree on something. Socrates, Plato, thank you for these enlightening ideas. They make me question myself and want to be a better person. Especially you, Socrates. You, you started all this. I I bet they paraded you around Athens like a hero. Nope, they killed you. <laughs> but like all good things in some Jim Bro relationships, it had to end. One of the boys drops the lifestyle, becomes unmotivated, finds a new job or gets married and doesn't have the time. Or he dies going for a PR benching the entire weight of the stupidity in the Athenian oligarchy. They were corrupt in taking bribes and Socrates was calling them out and they said, No, you're corrupt. You're corrupting the youth. And he said, No, I'm not. What are you going to do? Kill me? Yeah, we'll kill you. Do it. You won't. And then they killed him. This is the death of Socrates. It's my screensaver for every device I have. <laughs> I'm so smart. <laughs> It's the ultimate representation of Socrates' commitment to excellence, or in Greek, arete. In the corner here is Plato, pondering the teachings and friendships Socrates left behind, and recalling the day that he was unjustly taken. No, he said, seek beauty and strength and truth for their own sake, the right way, without cop-out PEDs, not for TikTok clout. High schoolers, don't crowd around the machines. Don't go for girls, go for men. Do it because you want to be healthy and challenge yourself. Don't use it as an excuse to push away your problems and responsibilities. And then he willingly drank the laced pre-workout and died. His charge was that he was supposedly teaching against the Greek gods. Gods that were just fantastical beings that served the purpose of magical wish fulfillment for the people and their corrupt rulers. Apparently, they didn't even care if he died. They just wanted him to shut up. But he, being dedicated to truth, was like, no, I'm not doing anything wrong. And I'm not gonna get away with it just because I can. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a very cynical person. This whole video has been about why people are either delusional or probably evil. But that's not what I'm trying to do. 
I mean, Socrates sounded mean and all and he's calling everyone out, but he loved his fellow Athenians. He just wanted them to think more critically. Wait, am I- am I Socrates? No, but I do care about everyone, no matter who they are. Especially you! Yeah! You! You! You look amazing! Look! Look at your beautiful face being reflected in the black screen right now. Oh man! Awooga! <laughs> because sure, Athenians and modern people nowadays are the embodiment of the negative parts of these ideas. They seem to be selfish and only seek pleasure and do anything to feel good as a way to remedy their internal pain. Even if on the outside it seems beautiful and successful, it's ultimately corrupt. They put on their rings and march into their caves because it is the only thing that's ever been told to them to be real. But you know what else is a cave? Having a cynical mindset like this. And I don't know if Socrates is actually a good person. He's dead. I never met him. But I have met men and women who are good, and they've changed my mind. And if you have met me and you're watching this, no, you're not one of those people. There are good people out there, and you can meet them, and you can be one of them. I don't know, you might feel trapped or lost, or that the world is bad, or that maybe even you're bad or unworthy or whatever. But like, I'm telling you now, girl, guy, whoever you are, that that's a cave. How you're feeling now doesn't have to last forever. So put down your phone once in a while, go on a walk. Go to the gym, dislike this video, and then go outside and learn that you're wrong, and then come back and leave a love letter for me in the comments. Join a club, read a book, tell that person how you feel. Talk to lots of people about the things you love, like books, movies, and video games, and deep things, even if people on the internet like me make fun of you. Make a YouTube channel, learn a new skill, call your parents, find out who you are. Just keep climbing through the cave, because there's always cool new things to learn and heavier PRs. I'm going to leave you with my favorite quote from Socrates. If I've learned anything from Minecraft, it's that exploring caves can be pretty fun.